So, happy Monday. Um, I've spent most of the day today um, downloading Facebook Live videos onto my computer, I Star, and um, downloading them onto my computer, uploading them onto YouTube, and then linking them onto my Patreon page. Um, <clears throat> and if that sounds tedious, it is. Um, but apparently it's, uh, it's an important thing for me to be doing because uh, apparently the new thing for Facebook, I've, I've been told that Facebook made some policy changes and, and I, I, I haven't seen, you know, I haven't, I haven't really seen uh, conspicuous changes in my Facebook, but I hear people talking about changes in Facebook. Anyways, the other day I did a uh, video of a ogre uh, charging to towards us with a big club, and I guess his nether regions were too detailed or something, I'm guessing, but anyways, they've taken it down. And uh, the new policy apparently is we don't even tell you or, you know, give you an opportunity to to bicker about it. Uh, it just disappears. <laughs> so that's how it is. So uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It is their website and they can do what they want. But um, I, I missed that one. I didn't download that one in time so it just doesn't exist anymore and, and i'm sorry about that because there may have been you know there may be conversations that we had that we lost uh, i may have said something intelligent for once or something and, and you know it's just you know, <laughs> there's a there's no record of it now um so i'm i'm disappointed not to have uh, to have missed my opportunity because it was up for a few days I'm pretty sure I think it disappeared just uh, you know yesterday or today <clears throat> so that's kind of irritating um, anyhow here's Ned and that leg uh, you know I, I drew it fairly Accurately, I think, uh, according to the uh, to the model, you know, to the photo that I have of the model. Um, but he's definitely flexing. I mean, it's it's like it's posed to look like a relaxed pose, and at the same time, he's straining all those muscles. So, you know, his his shoulders are kind of thrust, and his leg is kind of tilted off to the side and pointed, and he's clenching his butt cheeks, and and uh, he's definitely flexing his muscles. And uh, hopefully the photographer was quick and we didn't have to just stand there and do that for 20 minutes or something because that would have been painful. Um, but I don't like all that clenching looking stuff. It's, it's unnatural. I didn't recognize that fact, you know, years ago. Uh, I used to buy uh, bodybuilding magazines and all kinds of other magazines and I thought they were going to be really good reference and you know I suppose it's all to the good but uh, I, I now look at most of that stuff uh, I can't use that <laughs> there's doing there's nothing I you know I used to think if he's doing you know one arm I can't even fit myself into the screen but he's got one arm up you know like he's flexing and then the other arm is straight well, I can put a sword in this hand and a shield in that hand or something. I can make that into a combat pose. And, um, and the truth is I go online and look at other people's fantasy art and I can see where people have done that exact thing. And I'm like, oh, that looks bad. <laughs> and so, um, so I'm glad I don't have a bunch of work out there that looks like that because it, it's not convincing. <laughs> It looks like what it is. It looks like he's hooks. And it's this one. Uh, very strong, very muscular guy, and he was 
definitely flexing, not relaxing, um, it looks like. So, changing that part. Um, that in particular, that leg, that's going to improve it. A little bit more relaxed. Um, yeah, that looks more relaxed. Okay. It's a little bit possible that this shoulder is down further than it should be. It should be up just, just a smidge. I'm going to raise that. He really is a big beefy guy. Most of my meds are not quite that, not quite that brutally strong. Maybe. It's a strange thing for me to do. I think I'll make him a little bit scrawnier. Might not have to do much. Let's bring the body in a little bit. I still have loads of photos from life drawing class. I guess I'm just being picky about them because I go through a lot of them and just kind of go, eh, you know, and, and I don't, uh, I haven't been using those. Not a very good photo, or I'm just not seeing it, just not seeing it translating into, uh, into a fantasy piece or, or whatever. Uh, that's, It's a little bit like riding a bike, um, in the sense that um, if you ride your bike every day, you you're, you get used to it, and you're you, you have some exercise, and you you know you're you're not as winded, and your muscles aren't as tired, and, and everything, so you can go further, and and you know what you're doing, you don't lose your balance, and all that. Um, <clears throat> But if you stop riding your bike for a month or two, you kind of have to start all over again, like with any exercise program. And, uh, you know, you may remember how to do it, but it, it isn't coming naturally to you anymore. It's a strain all of a sudden. And, and this is, I find my imagination is a little bit like that. If, if I go for a stretch without doing any unique things, um, then it's harder to generate an idea. It's harder to do something creative. Um, it, but then the more I do do something creative, the easier it starts to flow. And I go through one piece of paper after another doing some crazy unexpected things, something I didn't even expect myself. And uh, it just takes a ramping up to do that. Hi, sissy. You're here. Uh, like the leg much better now. Thank you. I do too. Um, I, I can hardly, you can hardly see it facing here, but I can turn around and look at my computer screen. And, uh, it's like looking in a mirror. And I like it better. So, yeah, that's much more natural. And, uh, I made his shoulders a little smaller. Because he was just too macho for me and I was intimidated. And so now, you know, I'm going to netify him. That sounds terrible. I'm going to netify him. We'll start with boots. Boots can never be wrong.
plus. That may be all you have to do. Right there. And, um, he's not really doing anything martial right now, so I'm going to assume that his sword is sheathed. No, I'm not being, uh, euphemistic. His sword is sheathed. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw this. Sheep has two little D rings on it. Half circular rings and strap that goes around to the front. And a strap that pretty much just comes up from the back. Holds the sword about in that position. I'm probably going to put a big wide leather belt on it because I just do that. Um, I have misgivings about doing that because I like that the shape, that diamond shape that the muscles make right there. Um, you know, I really kind of enjoy that um, when somebody has that. You know, when you when you draw, I, I enjoy the fact that I've drawn it well. You know, and it, it came out nice. Uh, when somebody's got a lot of muscles there. Uh, that's, that's cool. It's just a cool looking shape on a, on a person. Um, so I kind of am reluctant to lose it. I, but, you know, that's where a belt goes, and so you are going to lose it pretty much. Uh, So probably these days, um, after finishing the video, I'm going to go straight ahead and download it, save it, uh, just in case it's uh, getting deleted. Um, so I, I don't want to. Uh, you know, that one, it was just from last week or week before, uh, one of the ogre, one of the big ogre ones. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I just thought I had plenty of time to, to download that. Well, you know, I thought they'd leave it alone forever and, and yeah, they didn't. So, So I'll download them as, as soon as I'm done. Uh, I've been, you know, starting starting at the the present and uh, scrolling backwards, you know, find a video that worked because um, we've had some that didn't, and. Uh, yeah, find a video, download it, go back and do the next one, and uh, I'll have to step it up, step it up.
So I'm going to make a uh, big wide leather belt with some kind of a diamond shaped pattern on it that will be reminiscent of the diamond shaped muscular pattern on his back. Let's see how I like that. How do you like that? Um, My loincloths always go flitting off to the side because, you know, they hide too much if they don't. Um, Sharon says, no more hokey pokey. Um, John says, I am here and hear you. I was polishing off two hot dogs, rolled in tortillas, Sharon style. I didn't know that was Sharon style. Sharon says, Mexican style. I don't get credit. Uh, I didn't know that either. Um, didn't know Mexicans eat eight hot dogs. Of course, Mexicans eat hot dogs. I guess. Used to be a place pretty close to here called Al's Hot Dogs. It's in this Chicago style hot dogs. Having never been to Chicago, um, I don't know what is particularly Chicagoan about a particular hot dog or pizza for that matter. There's people that make, make the distinction in such a way that it says it's very, very important to them, but I don't understand. But anyhow, um, it was Chicago style hot dog, and uh, the price was pretty affordable. It was a nice place. I'd done a lot of window signs for him, and he was appreciative. And you know, um, it was just a pleasant place to to go and and eat. Um, and for a pretty cheap, a cheap hot dog or hamburger or a gyro or something like that, and. Uh, Yeah, and the economy happened. He's gone. I hope he's doing well somewhere. I think he kind of he kind of ducked out before things got really bad. But anyhow, uh, I learned that you can really, really bother Chicago people by asking for ketchup on a hot dog. Uh, you know, when they ask you what what you want on your hot dog. Uh, Ketchup is not one of the options, so I, I loved to I love to go ahead and ask for ketchup on the hot dog. So that you could just sit there and watch them shake. And just... <laughs> it's funny. Um, they had ketchup in the place. You could go put ketchup on your own. You could desecrate your own hot dog, but they weren't going to desecrate it for you by putting ketchup on it. And possibly, that was what made it a Chicago hot dog, and I just turned it into a New York hot dog, which I don't know. Um, but yeah.
I put ketchup on stuff. Because I'm a heathen. Did you wrapped in bacon too? So hot dogs wrapped in bacon. And then is it on a bun or is it in a tortilla? Was it deep fried? Bacon wrapped deep fried hot dog. That sounds awesome. And I know I'm making sissy hungry. Bacon wrapped deep fried hot dog, sissy. Let's go for it. Pretty neutral stance. It's not really looking it's too excited about anything. Maybe there's nothing violent going on at the moment. Or we could draw a big ogre about to sneak up on him and grab him. There's his shoulder. Oh, God. Take the towel. Just like with other people, it's the bad movie racer. Yep, we're talking, uh, oh, oh, Sissy doesn't want a bacon-wrapped 
hot dog. Well, that's just, that's amazing. I never imagined a, a vegan that didn't want a bacon wrapped hot dog. But okay. Uh, they do buns, add salsa, onions, cilantro, etc. Wrapped in corn tortillas, and they can be fried, or the hot dog itself can be fried. And that does. Yeah, well, that does sound actually kind of good. Um, and now we want hot dogs. Yeah, um, there we are. Yeah, um, so, so this thing. The model was also bald headed. So I'm making up the hair. That's okay, those long haired guys are so egotistical. Notice that they're all so full of themselves and like tossing their hair around. Fun, shabby. Those dang long hair guys. So when an adventurer is not facing a, a, a foe, a monster or something, he's not got his sword in his hand, he's not in imminent danger, or at least no obvious imminent danger, what is he doing? He could be standing in front of a doorway, um, you know, like in Lord of the Rings, trying to figure out what the riddle means so he can get the door open. Um, or he could be standing at the hot dog stand reading the menu. And what the hell is a chorizo? I never heard of it. Um, I think I like the bar idea better than the door. I don't know why. Maybe I just want to go out and buy a hot dog. That gives me the opportunity to uh, to draw a barmaid, right? The important features of a barmaid, right there. She's she's leaning she's leaning on the bar. Get you um, yeah, to draw a barmaid there. Draw somebody else at the bar. Maybe somebody sitting on a stool so they could be facing this way. Yeah. 
It's just blocking the idea, man. I mean, I'll, I'll find, uh, I'll find some kind of a model, um, on, uh, I'll, I'll Google barmaid, Renaissance barmaid, and, uh, see what I come up with. I bet I'll find something. And, uh, I don't know what that is. A signboard or a window or a mirror. Or a portal to a, to hell. I'm not sure. Um, but it, it takes these groups and puts a, a taller, these shapes puts a taller thing up there so it gives me a little bit more of that triangular composition that I'm fond of. Enormous tracks of land. Yes, that's right. <laughs> um, observing a town. That was a good idea too. Standing on top of a hill looking down into the town. Two doorways trying to choose. Good thoughts. Good thoughts. I could put the little, uh, the little magic door knockers on there from the labyrinth. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I have not utterly dismissed or can, or can, you know, can, can, uh, can, vocabulary sometimes just goes away. Committed. I have not utterly committed myself to making a bar. The thing is, I've never done it. So I might just go that way because it would just be a different kind of thing, uh, for me to draw. And Sharon sent me, um, a link that I'm going to have. I have a feeling if I follow that link right now, it'll kill the video. Um, which, you know, it's been 32 minutes and 57 seconds. Um, so possibly I could just do that and see you tomorrow. Hang on. We'll see what happens. It opened it in a new tab. Okay. Very good. Um, yeah. That's, uh, that was sort of an, uh, impressionist sort of thing. Uh, we've been enjoying watching the Murdoch mysteries, or the Murdoch murders? The Mur Detective Murdoch something. We've been enjoying the hell out of this show that I don't know what it's called or anything about it. Um, it's, uh, it's a detective show set in Canada. Um, and it's in the Victorian era, so right at the turn of the century. So they, um, um, you know, the beginning of the series was a couple years prior to the turn of the century, and now it's like 1982 or something like that. Uh, Murdoch Mysteries. Um, and, uh, yeah, that picture, that picture reminded me of that. There you are. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's a fun, it's a fun thing. It's not very terribly serious. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we've been enjoying that. Lightweight. You know, is it those, those British and Canadian and Australian people, they, they make nice murders, you know? It's not like American murders. American murders are harsh, you know? You could hurt somebody with that. But, uh, they make nice, Nice, uh, comfortable murders that make you feel good about yourself. And so, uh, with that, with that, I'm going to leave you until tomorrow, Tuesday, and, uh, I should be back at three o'clock. And hope to see you then. Thanks for coming by.